Hi, my name is Malki Rosenfeld. I'm a traditional percussive dancer and the styles I do are called clogging and step dance, uh, both of which are cousins of American tap dance. As a teaching artist, I introduce students to the elements of percussive dance and then within the a sort of a structured framework, I give them the freedom to create their own percussive patterns. It's during this process that we end up using a lot of math and we end up talking about a lot of math. And the math itself both describes their patterns and informs their creative choices. Um, I haven't always taught dance this way. I've been a teaching artist for about 14 years and I started thinking about and connecting math and dance about six years into my work and since I've brought the two together in the same classroom I found that the children's creative work is actually much stronger than it was before because of this connection. So this video is about what success looks like in children's bodies and in their creative work and also in terms of their math understanding. When I am assessing student success, I start with the dance. In my work, I meet a great diversity of skills and abilities. And even within same age classrooms, children's motor skills can vary drastically from each other. So what kinds of expectations are reasonable for both the making process and the product given this diversity? To help me answer this question, over the course of my career, I keep going back to two questions to help me focus what I'm trying to do in the classroom. The first is, what aspect of my art form is the most important to me as an artist? And the second one is, what are the most important skills I want my students to experience? The answers are that traditional percussive dance is full of patterns and rhythm and the opportunity for anyone to create their own dance steps. I want my students to build rhythmic and choreographic competency using the basic elements of percussive dance. They're creating their patterns using something I call movement variables. Mathematically speaking, these are simply pattern attributes, a uh, type of movement, foot position, and direction that can be combined in many different ways to create original patterns. As they create their patterns, they're instructed to dance exactly the same as their partners, to get their feet going in the same position in the same time, using the same directions and the same kind of movement. Percussive dance is a very precise art form, and one of the key skills in mathematics is to attend to precision. These girls make it look easy, but they probably had some previous dance training. Uh, many students in my classes have not had any experience with dance, so success for them comes with a little more effort. I'd say these boys represent the process that all partner teams need to go through to create their patterns. Some go through it more quickly and some are sort of stuck, get stuck right where these boys are at right now even though they're sort of at the beginning of their process. Um, it can be hard to coordinate your body and space and figure out your rights from your lefts. Make sure your rights are the same as your partner's rights and lefts. Um, and also to make sure you're going the same distance in your turns. Here they need a little more time to clarify their movements. Specifically, their right and left feet and their turns. What's the one thing that needs to be different in that pattern? They were opposite when they turned? When they turned. So which direction did you decide to turn in? So hold that fist for your right, okay? Five, Let's see six, if they can do it ready, now. go. One, two, three, four, yes! Nice! Now they're going to dance same. their pattern congruently, ready, which means basically One, in unison. Two, three, and then they're going to transform it using reflection symmetry. Sometimes people ask me whether or not I'm more concerned about the math or the dance in this kind of situation. Uh, okay. And so really, as I've said before, it's the math that is helping understand the action and the dance which is um, illustrating what the math actually means. Too often we see math in a static context and you can learn a lot 
by using moving patterns to really understand what's happening. Even if it's taking a long time for a student to get the dancing in their bodies oh, and make end. it work with Five, a partner, six, three, they should, yeah. by the third day, be able to identify um, the movement variables in their own dancing, at least what they're trying to do, and also um, what other kids are doing. So for example, <laughs> if I'd say, what are the movements that they're doing right now? It would be jumps, and then some steps, and a couple slides. Nice. I see it every time. If a child can describe their own work specifically, they are much better at analyzing others' choreography. It's a great thing. Even though we basically do the same work in both fourth and fifth grade, there are some differences between those two grade levels. Specifically, fifth graders are a lot more self-conscious than fourth graders, and that's fine. That's sort of appropriate for that age group. You'll see this self-consciousness in the way they hold their arms in front of them, put their hands in their pockets. I consider it a great success when they can move past the self-consciousness and show their awesome work. And here are some examples. You may have noticed that the kids um, are sitting pretty attentively in most of these clips, and that's because I, it's my active observation time. They have a task to do every time they sit down. When they're watching their friends work, they have to analyze it. Is it congruent or reflected? Are there two different patterns or two of the same patterns? Is what If it is not congruent, how has it been transformed? And in this case, these fifth graders did not have enough time with rotation symmetry to fully understand it in the dancing, um, and that's okay. I'm less concerned about how far we get in the residency topic-wise than whether the kids are involved, whether they're engaged and working on making something, whether they're watching their friends work with interest, and uh, whether they're giving me responses that show me that they're working on understanding the math in this new context. I mean, it's not in a textbook, so it's brand new to them in some ways. They can look at it on the page, but this is the math applied in a new situation. Here is my ideal criteria for success. They have a pattern they can remember, they can dance in unison, they've applied a transformation at some point in the week, their pattern is interesting to the viewer, and they can analyze their own and others' work. But what about these boys? Fourth beat, fifth beat, sixth beat, seventh beat, and eighth beat. Okay, now, you have to stop what I say. I'll just say one, two, three, and you stop. Okay, be one, go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> it's hard to remember that whole sequence. I'm going to go with you. Okay, I think and that by the end of a five-day residency, seven, kids seven, should seven. certainly have more seven, facility seven, with their footwork, seven, especially if it's a pattern they created, seven, more than seven, these boys are showing. Um, I really seven, think it just wasn't seven, their thing, seven, and seven, that's okay. Seven, that happens seven, once or twice seven, in a class. But really, they did meet the, my minimum requirements for participation, which includes stand while we're standing, sit when we're sitting, don't disturb other people while they're working, and everyone presents something on the final day. They did that, but I'm not sure that was success.
Good. They just started doing the A together. That was really good A. Try that one more time. Do you want to do just one or do you want to do both? One. One? Okay, let's watch one. Five. In the end, it's not whether you're a great dancer or not, but whether you worked hard, whether you have something to show for it, there's always one or two kids who really can only do one four beat pattern and not repeat it and that's okay. Um, here are some other examples of what success looks like beyond the actual product. Being able to talk about their work and other people's work really starts from the very first day and I have to model it for them and have them practice it. These girls are having trouble with their directions. Okay, so those diagonal, diagonal. And I'm gonna have the class practice the words along with them. Look how much better they do once we clarify that.